Hello, my name is Calvin Choi. I'm an interventional cardiologist at UF Health. Today, we're going to talk about coronary CTO PCI, and let us begin. So I have no disclosure. Here are the, some of the objectives that we'll cover today. Uh, in, uh, starting from uh, the definition of chronic total occlusion, and we'll go through pathology, morphology, epidemiology, treatment options and goals, and uh, our current guidelines, controversy, and uh, uh, some, uh, some of the uh, CTO PCI specific topics. So definition, chronic total occlusion uh, is a heavy atherosclerotic plaque burden resulting in a complete occlusion of a vessel for at least three months. Contrary to acute coronary syndrome, a CTO can develop over a prolonged period and can be insidious. Uh, because of the insidious nature of the disease, collaterals may develop in an attempt to provide perfusion distal to the occluded segment. Collaterals refer to conduits in between epicardial coronary arteries without intervening capillary beds. Collaterals provide alternate route for blood supply to affected myocardium. Uh, collaterals are small caliber vessels and often insufficient to meet the demand of the affected myocardium. Subsequently, patients with a chronic total occlusion may develop symptoms associated with myocardial ischemia. Symptoms may vary in severity and character. For example, patients may uh, complain of fatigue, chest pain, dyspnea, neck or arm pain, uh, malignant heart rhythm, heart failure. Coronary CTO morphology is complex. Uh, proximal and distal cap are com composed of fibrous and calcified cap. Uh, intervening segments uh, may contain microchannels, necrotic area, uh, atherosclerotic plaque, as well as calcification. Incidence of coronary CTO is uh, quite high. 10 to 20 percent of all diagnostic coronary angi angiogram will reveal uh, coronary CTO. Uh, 80 to 90 percent of the patients with coronary CTO are symptomatic. Treatment options uh, need to be tailored based on severity of symptoms, uh, other uh, coronary artery disease, structural pathology, ischemic burden, and risk profile. Medical therapy certainly is an uh, uh, acceptable treatment option. If, however, medical ther therapy is inadequate or insufficient, revascularization uh, needs to be considered. We need to consider uh, the size of ischemic burden, and the symptoms associated with uh, ischemia. PCI can be offered for isolated chronic total occlusion or patients who are poor candidate for coronary artery bypass grafting. Coronary artery bypass grafting can be considered for patients with left main or multivessel coronary artery disease or in need of a cardiac surgery for other reasons. Traditionally, CTO patients are relegated to medical therapy or to coronary artery bypass grafting. Uh, frequently, medical therapy may not be sufficient and may not provide adequate symptom relief from myocardial ischemia. Many patients are not considered uh, or candidate for coronary artery bypass grafting for uh, various reasons. In fact, 7 to 15% of patients referred for coronary artery bypassing are turned down. Uh, reasons for turn down are two thirds high risk, one third poor target, minimal symptoms, patient does not want the surgery, and patient may be suitable candidate for PCI. 10 to 15% of prior coronary bypass graft patients require revascularization within 10 years after the initial coronary artery bypass grafting. Consequently, a number of patients with CTO experience symptoms refractory to conventional medical therapy and do not receive revascularization therapy when indicated. Treatment goals for uh, revascularization in CTO patients are to relieve angina, which is the primary indication for CTO PCI, to improve exercise tolerance, to improve LV function, improve tolerance for future acute coronary syndrome, reduce need for coronary artery bypass grafting, reduce future events, redu reduce ischemic arrhythmia, and improve survival. Historically speaking, PCI had a limited role in CTO treatment. 
only about 10 to 15 percent of the patients with CTO are treated with PCI during the 2000s. Reasons for low CTO PCI attempt, historically low success rate, 50 to 60 percent, limited operator experience, perceived inefficient utilization of cath lab resources and personnel, potential risk for radiation injury, and contrast-induced nephropathy due to complex and long procedure, uncertain clinical benefit. Contemporary PCI literature uh, gives us uh, better insight into uh, the practice of uh, CTO PCI. A number of studies have shown significant improvement in angina management with uh, CTO PCI compared to medical therapy. Also, we know that exercise tolerance can improve with uh, CTO PCI. LV function and LV hemodynamics uh, may improve with CTO PCI as well. And in this study, uh, LV function had improved after a successful CTO PCI in patients with low LV ejection fraction less than 35%. Need for future coronary artery bypass grafting can be significantly reduced with CTO PCI. Ischemic arrhythmia can be reduced as well. In this study, patients who have no chronic total occlusion had much less need for ICD therapy uh, compared to patients with CTL. Blue line indicates no chronic total occlusion versus green line, which indicates patients with chronic total occlusion. In this study, uh, patients who had complete revascularization compared to patients who had CTO were much less likely to have ICD therapy. Future events can be reduced with CTO, PCI. Mortality post-MI can yield significant difference between patients with CTO versus none. In this uh, study, red line represents CTO patients, yellow line represents multivessel disease without CTO, and blue line represents single vessel disease. As is evident, both Patients with multivessel disease without CTO and single vessel disease, uh, when compared to CTO patients, had a significant um, better outcome uh, long term. In this study, all cause mortality and cardiac mortality favored patients who underwent revascularization with PCI or coronary artery bypass grafting when compared to patients who only received medical therapy. The results are similar in both men and women. All-cause mortality and MACE favor revascularization compared to medical therapy alone. Current guidelines recommend uh, CTO PCI for patients who are refractory to medical therapy. Uh, this is true for both European and American societies. Number of studies have shown controversy regarding CTO PCI. Some studies have favored uh, outcome associated with CTO PCI, while others uh, have not. Some of the considerations for PCI include patient selection, the need to have favorable benefit and risk ratio, patient uh, needs to be symptomatic and have significant ischemic burden and viable myocardium. Operator experience is critical. Recent advances in innovative techniques and novelty equipment have improved the success rate for CTO PCI. Collateral wiring, the section and reentry technique, experience with specialty equipment are critical. Success rate for CTO PCI by experienced interventional cardiologists specializing CTO PCI is 80 to 90 percent in suitable patients with CTO. Expert CTO operator would have performed greater than 200 CTO PCI cases and perform at least 50 CTO PCI per year, if not more. Uh, suitable anatomy. To define pseudo suitable anatomy, we need dual coronary angiography, we need to define proximal and distal cap, we need to know the lesion length, uh, lesion and target vessel characterizations such as calcification, stents, tortuosity, bifurcation, and size are important. 
Collateral circulation needs to be determined, whether they are bridging, septal, or epicardial. And we'll touch base on vessel architecture constant shortly. This is an image of collaterals, which shows various types of collaterals. There are bridging collaterals, there are epicardial collaterals, and there are septal collaterals that often bridge LID uh, to a distal part of the RCA. Vessel architecture is an important concept to understand. Historically, we used stiff wire to cross a CTO lesion, which often did not work or resulted in complications. Utilizing specialty wires, we are able to use a dissection reentry technique to get around the CTO segment rather than puncturing through the CTO segment directly. Here's an illustration. There are four ways to cross the CTO segment. There's anti-grade wire escalation technique. There's anti-grade dissection reentry technique. There's retrograde wire escalation technique and retrograde dissection and reentry technique. Here's some uh, potential uh, strategies that we use for CTO intervention uh, utilizing the collaterals. We find that about 70% of the CTO cases are done anti-grade, while about 30% of the cases are done retrograde. CTO learning uh, is a long-term uh, process. There are different stages an operator uh, goes through. Initially, operator learns the anti-grade wire escalation technique, then to anti-grade dissection and reentry technique, then to retrograde technique, PCI considerations include radiation exposure, contrast, duration of procedure, and risk. As this data illustrates, PCI CTO does carry a risk. However, this must be weighed against the potential benefit against the potential risk involved. This is an illustration of a uh, right coronary artery CTO, um, PCI, performed through uh, retrograde approach. Here you see a left anterior descending artery, septal perforator, and occluded right coronary artery. By utilizing septal perforator, we negotiate, to negotiate our wire to the distal segment of the right coronary artery and advance our wire and microcatheter toward the proximal segment of the right coronary artery. Then the wire is externalized. An additional uh, angioplasty and stem placement is performed anti-grade. And this is the final result. This is another example of the procedure of the right coronary CTO PCI. Here you see an occluded segment of the right coronary artery uh, utilizing dual injection. Here we have a wire in the right coronary artery in the anti fashion, and we have another wire from the left side going through the septal perforator and engaging the right coronary artery retrograde. Here we perform dissection from the retrograde approach and re-entry is performed. Thereafter, angioplasty and stem placement is performed, and this is the final result. So why consider CTO-PCI program? Patients with CTO are underserved cohort. Often patients are told nothing can be done and there are no other options. We do know that successful CTO-PCI yield clinical benefit with appropriate anatomy and appropriate patient selection. Some of the barriers are there are very few number of CTO programs. Operator experience and expertise is critical for the success of a CTO intervention, and there's a steep learning curve. In summary, CTO is not a benign entity. Patients with CTO are underserved cohort. Successful CTO PCI yield clinical benefits careful patient selection, suitable anatomy, 
and operator experience are foundation for a successful CTO PCI program. For more information, please visit ufhealth.org, heart care service, PCI CTO. Thank you for your time.